All right. Thank you guys for showing up. Dang it. Let's get this party started. Man, where are we at? We're at Luke. Luke 15. 15. Let's get our read on. You got your Bible? <laughs> you got your sandwich? <laughs> Whatever it is that you're drinking, I hope, you know, it's wholesome. You got your Labor Day lemonade? <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, let's see what we can do with it. Let's see what the Lord is going to show to us today. Okay. <clears throat> 15. All the tax collectors. Hmm. All the tax collectors and sinners were approaching to listen to him, that dude Jesus. Okay, so tax collectors, you know, <coughs> IRS, mm. <laughs> franchise tax borders, you know, your state, evil, evil <laughs> your state tax border, anyway. Like <laughs> All right, uh, these are sinners. Why? Because it's institutionalized theft. Yep. If they are assuming the to uh, make claims to the first year of fruits, you go out there and work for it, and they come in and they say, "Hey, we're gonna take some of that." That's theft, okay? And uh, not only that, it's an institution of covetousness because you have in here with America, you know, we have a, a, a power to, you know, it's, it's we the people. And when you have the people decide that they want to use their power to uh, tell the state that, hey, we think so-and-so has too much and we want it and we want to use the state to... Uh, put sanctions on them if they don't, you know, give up what it is that we think they should pay the people, you know, uh, then that's that's theft. That's institutionalized theft and covetousness. Amen. So and that's that's what we got going on right now, y'all. And it, it doesn't make us a better place. People are getting more and more bitter. It doesn't work you, yeah. because these, you, these people are insatiable. You can't satisfy their greed. And just like Thomas Sowell says, and if I may paraphrase, Greed ain't these corporations that they accuse. Greed is when you're telling the state, I want these people punished if they don't give me what I want. That's greed. And so, you know, uh, kudos to Thomas Sowell for that breakdown. Yes. And, not only, and of course, that breakdown comes biblically. I don't care what anybody says. The Bible, Jesus didn't go around teaching a collectivist model. Yeah. Okay? You can't be charitable. By uh, uh, state sanctions, you just can't. It ain't, it ain't gonna work. Um, so at any rate, these cats are sinners, and um, let's see. And the Pharisees and scribes were complaining. Man, y'all some whiny. All right, these these uh, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Okay, so Pharisees, what are you guys tripping on? It's 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 one thing for him to be amongst them. It's another thing for him to be doing what they do. He's not doing what they do. He's just amongst them. And the thing is, you know, it's kind of hard to heal sick people if you're not amongst them. You kind of have to make some contact with them, okay? And while these Pharisees, and this is a lot of people, while you're sitting there judging Jesus, why aren't you lending a hand? What's wrong with y'all? It's like y'all just sit there and judge these people and you're not doing anything to help them with their behavior except what? Threaten them? Scare them? Make them feel like they're just so inferior to you because they do this or do that? You know, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't agree with their lifestyle either, but how you gotta, you, it's like, what are you gonna do to actually uh, cause them to repent? It's, I, don't, I don't see what it is that y'all are doing that's gonna help them with that. Uh, so, Jesus told them this parable. What man amongst you has 100 sheep and loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open field and go after the lost one until he finds it? When he has found it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders. Oh, bam. You like my, you like my lamb wear? All right. Puts it on his shoulders. My lamb scarf. <laughs> my lamb scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Scar uh, and come home and coming home, he calls up his homies, he calls his neighbors together, saying, And they rejoice with me, y'all, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in this same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who do not need repentance. <laughs> okay, let's let's back up. So now the, the the first issue I had with this is that okay, if this parable is implicative of Jesus uh, being the shepherd, and this is his flock, 
Now, Andrew, they're, they're, now let's let's not get too far off with uh, you know with illustrations. There's there's things that that Jesus will illustrate that you don't necessarily expect it to perfectly point to him. It's an illustration lent to instruction. It's not the instruction itself. Like to say, for instance, the, uh, the parable that Jesus gives when, the, when he says the king orders his servants to bring the unbelievers to him and slaughter them in his presence. No. Okay, that's not Jesus. That's not the instruction of Jesus. It's an illustration. It's basically saying, look, you know, there really, there's only two places. There's heaven and then there's hell. If you're an unbeliever, and you don't want to be in my kingdom, I'm not going to make you be in my kingdom. But the only thing left is hell. And basically, you are going to be, you're going to choose, you're going to choose your own slaughter. Okay? I'm not going to force this on you any more than I'm going to force you to be in heaven. So the instruction in that, it, it, the, the illustration in that parable is part of the instruction. It's not the instruction itself. A, a simpler a, analogy that I could give you would be, look, if you got a cake mix... All right. And the cake mix says uh, some water, uh, three raw eggs and some butter. Well, imagine each one of those ingredients are essential to the instruction to the, prepare this cake. You need these elements to eat the cake, but you don't eat the three all, raw, raw eggs by themselves. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you got to you got to take the you got to take the full picture of this instruction in order to make a digestible uh, uh, teaching out of it. You can't just take like pieces of it and try to digest that and think that you're going to get the ideal results. You're not. So it's the same thing in here with Jesus saying about uh, uh, he's going to lead these sheep or like I was saying about the. Um, uh, the king who says, bring the unbelievers to me and slaughter them in my presence. That's not an instruction for us to go out and slaughter people, y'all. That's not what that is. What it is, it's hyperbole saying, dude, you're not, you're basically, you know, you're supposed to bring them to me because heaven is all there is. And if they don't want heaven, I'm not going to make them have it, have it. But hell is basically they're choosing their own slaughter. All right. Um, so in this right here. The problem that I had with this upon reading it at first was what man among you has 100 sheep and loses one of them does not leave the 99 in the open field and go after the lost one until he finds it. Now, there's there's another instruction that Jesus is pointing out here. But remember, once again, don't take these illustrations out and try to digest them by themselves. you got to look at the whole picture. All right. So um, now. If Jesus is saying that this shepherd will leave this unattended flock, it's like, okay, well, you just had a sheep wander off. Chances are really good that you may end up having some more sheep wander off while you're gone. Yeah. So you're going to leave in this open field, and these sheep are going to wander off. Maybe another, I don't know if the whole flock will, but some, the other might wander off. Or you might have some, you know, some greedy you know, dog-like creature that might want to get him a little sheep snack or something like that. You know, have some lamb chops or, or whatever. You know, I, I don't know what sort of predators that they may have. Or it may be another person may want to stroll up and say, hey, man, I'm going to gank me some of these sheep. I don't know. He's, he's going to leave these this flock unattended. That don't sound like Jesus. That doesn't That doesn't sound practical to me. So, but we have to, and we have to square this by... Does not Jesus say, I will not leave you nor forsake you? But in this illustration, he does leave. And he forsakes 99. And this, this is his flock. It ain't like this. If they're his flock, it ain't like they're non-believers or something like that. This is his flock. They're, they're in, his, in his camp, his care. We don't leave them. He's going to forsake them for this one sheep. That doesn't sound co uh, uh, consistent with what Jesus has told us. Um, let's see. So he's going to leave this 99. In this open field and go after the one until he finds it and when he has found it he joyfully puts it on his shoulders okay we read that now the thing is <clears throat> my answer came you know and remember y'all get your get your answer from the bibles you know get your answer from the bible let the bible square itself y'all don't don't try to go off like willy right. nilly and try to pull an answer out of your own so-called understanding okay yeah. Um, and you guys, and of course, you know, you guys can check me and say, uh, you know, Joe, you may be reaching a little far to say that that's what the Bible says, but regardless of which the discipline is to try to stick to what the Bible says. And I feel like what I got is the answer is right here. 
and coming home, he calls his friends. He calls his friends and neighbors together, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. Okay, now, if this shepherd, and you know, and maybe there's some more familiarizing I need to do with shepherd culture, but <laughs> the thing is, if he is able to go and tell his friends, call his friends and his neighbors together to throw a little party because he found his sheep, and it's obviously important. They see that this is important. Hey, man, hey, man, he found his sheep. Let's go have a party. He's inviting us to a party because he found his sheep. Now, if it's that important for them to do that, then I would think that it's also important enough for his friends and neighbors for, for him to be able to say, hey, I'm going to go look for one of the sheep that I had just lost. Can you watch my flock while I'm gone? I don't. So basically what I'm saying is, is that I don't think he abandoned. I don't think he forsaked uh, his, his flock. I don't think he abandoned them without leaving someone there in his place while he went to go look for his sheep. Right. The lost one. Hey, now this is like I said, because Jesus says, I will not leave you or forsake you. And when Jesus departs, when he says, I got to go. Did Jesus just leave us all alone? No, he sent us the Holy Spirit. He sent right. us the comforter. Okay? So even in this parable, it's like, whoa, it looks like Jesus abandoned us, but he doesn't. He doesn't abandon us. And if he's, if he's the figure in this, if he's the good shepherd, the good shepherd didn't leave his flock unattended. I don't know if they had dogs. Maybe he had a sheepdog. Maybe he left them in care of a sheepdog or something like that. I don't know. But I don't think that he just abandoned his flock without telling a friend or something like right. that. Sent someone in his place to watch them <clears throat> the way that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit when he de when Jesus departed. It, <clears throat> I tell you this in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who don't need repentance. Who are these 99 people <laughs> that don't need repentance? Who are they? Who are they? The, the perfect ones. The, the perfect ones. <laughs> ah, well... That I, I, I'm not I'm not content with that. I'm not content with that. So um, but here's the thing. I would say I tell you in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people. What, what that tells me is that there is potential big celebration that's getting ready to happen over these 99 people, because you show me 99 righteous people. And I will show you 99 people who were unrighteous and repented. Then you got righteous people. Yeah. Righteous people filtered through the lens of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what that's what it takes. Those, those would be your 99 people. Those are 99 people who have already 99 righteous people who have already repented. So um, so yeah, these angels they'll be happy over this one person. Yeah, because if they, why why would they be happy about 99 people who who don't think they need to repent. Who are, who are these right? I don't know if they exist. They don't exist. Yeah. So it's 99 righteous people. When, when these 99 righteous people rejoice, the angels will rejoice over each and every one of them that they did for the other sinner who had lost his way and found his way. And I would, I would posit that. Let's try uh, the parable of the lost coin. Where am I corner, man? I got to get this arcade game, man. I got to... I gotta, I gotta beat the boss. I gotta, I gotta play the the deaf, dumb, and blind kid who plays, who sure plays mean pinball. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> dating yourself. No, I didn't. All the, all the, all the. Actually, no, you're not from our parents' generation. Yeah, but all, all the young kids are, are singing it. They, they, they love the whole retro thing. All right. Or what woman who has ten silver coins, if she loses one coin? Does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. You know, so she can give it to her husband who lost that sheep. So he can go buy another one. Uh, <laughs> that's not right. Okay. Uh, I think you're adding description. <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, let's see. When she finds it, she calls She calls her girlfriend. Says, girlfriend, I had lost my coin, but I haven't found it. Uh, let me see. She finds it. What did you say earlier? Wait, because... Mm -hmm. She didn't call any men because they don't care. Yeah, it's like she didn't. She called. She called her girlfriends. She found. She she went and she found that coin, and then she took that coin and she put it 
in the payphone <laughs> right. so she can call her girlfriend. <laughs> it's like, you know how women love to get together and talk. And I'm like, girl, I found this coin. And, uh, Let's go to the hair shop. Yeah, I got to tell you, got to tell about your day. I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to stay up like that. <laughs> I, do, okay. I, do it in, <laughs> I do it in jest. You know? <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Sir, now, notice uh, it says, does she, does uh, not light a lamp? If she does, wait, sir. If she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. So it's like, well, what do you mean, like sweep the house? I mean, it sounds like you know she starts cleaning up, she starts organizing or something like that. It's like, well, that coin might have been easier to find had you already been organized. You wouldn't have to be like looking under stuff and, and whatnot. You know, had you already you know had your you know place in order. Um, but you know that could be that could be one thing to get out. It could be a lesson to get out of it, uh, you know. But she busts out with the old, uh, you know, the old school metal metal detector, a broom. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and, and and there, you know, they probably I don't know what kind of floors they had. They they might have had dirt floors. You know, she's probably just kind of you know try you know sweep the floor, you know, careful not to raise up too much dust, but you know, just kind of combing over the floor. You know, see if she can find that coin. Yeah. Uh, maybe the, the floor might have been laid by, you know, uh, flat rocks or something like that. Could have been like, you know, some uh, 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 blocks, you know, not sure, you know, how they how they may have laid in their floors. Um, but the, the bottom line is that she's going to kind of start to try to clean up, you know. But the thing is, you already kind of want to be prepared because sometimes, you know, we can have so much clutter that, you know, there are things that are like right in front of our face, you know, and, and – uh, Y'all, I'm, I'm I have I have a habit of of clutter myself, you know. Even trying to, you know, because I'm I'm a scatterbrain, you know, trying to be organized. But if you're not careful, you know, it's just something that you got to be diligent at. You know, if you're not careful, before you know it, you got clutter. And uh, you know, it's like I said, we try to keep it, you know, you know, it's like you know, uh, uh, uh you know, organized and stuff like that, orderly. You know, but if you, it's it's diligent, constant. Yes. You got to stay on it. You know, one day things get out. <laughs> right, I'm telling you. <laughs> and um, so, but it's a good. But and and all that to say is that you may think you're lost, somebody sitting right there, but it's kind of hard to catch it because you know there's clutter. Yeah. So have your house in order. That way, when you do lose something, it's like not such a big, you know, deal trying to find something. Right. Notice it because sometimes people like they'll make a bigger mess. Trying to find something. Yeah. Now, notice what she did. She didn't make a bigger mess. She actually started putting things in order. Mm. Right? Yeah. And it was putting things, not turning over, like, you know, pulling the cushions off a of off of sofa and digging through it and digging through her drawers and running around like a crazy person, like trying to find <laughs> something, making a bigger mess. Right. People tend to do that. No, she started organizing, putting things in order. Yeah. And that's when, you know, she found corn. Um, let me see. And then. This is pointing to what Jesus talked about how it is in heaven. I tell you in the same way, there is joy in the presence of God as God's angels over one sinner who repents. You know, and to me, that, that kind of gives like the disposition of these angels. Um, you know, this woman, it's like she's looking for this coin, you know, because, you know, maybe she's she probably not, not a very wealthy woman. Uh, you know, where a coin, now either you maybe, maybe you know, 10 silver coins, maybe that was a lot of money. Maybe she's just really frugal or something like that. You know, it's like, I lost me a coin. Uh, I'm gonna find that. I don't, I don't waste money like that. That's why I got money, you know, or you know, <laughs> I'm not, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, an expert in uh, historical economics. So um, I'm, I'm look, I'm trying to examine this from both sides in terms of what these 10 silver coins was worth. And uh, maybe it, it might be an instance where, uh, you know, maybe she just didn't have a lot of money and she had 10 silver coins and she lost one of them. And it's like, look, if I don't have that coin, I need I got a budget, you know, this for this 10 silver coins. That's, you know, that's my food. That's that's my my uh, my, my, my bills or, or whatever it is that she's doing. Uh, so. In this, you can see that, man, this. This uh, coin may stand between her and, you know, getting something to eat. She might be, you know, it's like, damn, man, that's my, I'm, I'm going to be short on food. She like, you know, she could be starving for this coin. You know, she hungry for this coin and kind of like points to the angels who are starving for us to get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like angels be like, man, please get it. For the love of God, will you get it? You know, and when we do, it's like, yeah, heck yeah. Can I say, can I say that, Jesus? Can we say heck yeah? Right. Heck yeah. 
And they're, just, you know, they're, they're, they're happy. They're just so happy. Like, you know, when we get it, when we come to the Lord, um, now let's get into the, the, the parable of the, of the knuckleheaded son. All right. The parable of the lost son. He also said a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his daddy, look, pops, give me my stuff. The share of the estate I have come to me. So he distributed the assets to them. He distributed assets to him. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his estate in foolish living. After he had spent everything, a severe, a severe famine struck that country and he had nothing. Then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his field to feed pigs. He longed to eat. Now, you guys are probably like pigs. This is a well-known story. At least it should be. A lot of people know the parable, mm -hmm. you know, the prodigal son. As it is. Um, he longed to, let me see, who he sent into the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to eat his fill from the carob pods the pigs were eating, but no one would give him any. When, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food, and here I am dying of hunger. Let's back this up. Okay, so it's interesting that he he go he he went he goes ahead and he takes a job. Okay, he's just he's just been broken down to where it's like you know he's he he already was this like really entitled kid, wanted his stuff and wanted to get gone. Now at some point through this experience, he realized that man, I I need to work. I need to work for mine. You know, if I'm gonna get anything, um. And it seemed that at this point, the only thing he was qualified to do was basically sell himself in a service. You know, he was, he's, he's pretty much like he's either got he's, he's just got like wages that are so bad that, you know, he's just he's paid in food. You know, I don't know if he's paid with any money, but he's basically he's a, he's a slave. Um, not and once again, he's not a kidnapped slave. Right. For those who try to say that the Bible condones slavery. He's not a kidnapped slave. He hires himself out as one. Okay? Puts himself into slavery. He was not kidnapped. He was not forced into it. Okay? But this evidently, I guess, was the only thing he was qualified to do. This is the only job he can get. So, and in doing so, um, his job is to feed the pigs. Now, he's starving. I think it's interesting that, well, dude, a pig is food. <laughs> you know, Jesus is giving this parable at the same, but at the same time, Jesus then said, "Hey, Peter, kill, eat." You know, oh man, this food is I can't. He's like, yeah, yeah, dude, just shut up, and eat. Go ahead, you know, make you some. Go ahead, and make you a a seafood bake. You know, go ahead and get you, you know, steam you up some of them clams and and, and uh, some crab. You know, some crawdads, whatever. Go ahead and make you some gumbo. Uh, you do it. I, I just go ahead and eat. I didn't, I didn't told you that's clean. All right. So, but Jesus in this parable, uh, he's not going to eat the pigs. You know, he's not going to make him some lamb chops. You know, he ain't going to make him some bacon or anything like that. You know, he's not, he's not going to do anything. Some, a pulled pork sandwich, I don't know. You know, he, 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 he like snatch up one of them pigs and go out there and make him a pit, you know, make him some barbecue. He's, he's not going to do that. And he's looking at the pig's food and he's coveting the pig's food. But his job was to feed the pigs. Yeah. Interesting, right? It's like he's it's like his job is to make sure that hey, these pigs got these carob pods. Care and they're edible. He can eat them. Humans eat these. Hey, we you know, humans eat carob. So, but he's not even eating that. He's got access to the food. And he's asking, hey, can I have some of this food? And the owner is like, no, you cannot eat the pig's food. So he could have been like, okay, well, you know what? Okay, whatever you say, man, I'll make sure the food's pig, pig, but you know, the pigs are fed. You know, turn his back and get all grumpy about it. Say, I'm gonna eat some of these carrots, man. Yeah. You know, and later on, I'm gonna snatch up one of these pigs and I'm gonna make me a BLT. <laughs> I'm gonna make me a a a a, a, a BCT, a, a a a bacon carob and tomato sandwich. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat one of these pigs. But he didn't do that. Now maybe he doesn't do it because of the culture that he's from. Maybe the pig is a filthy animal to him, so he will not even dare to eat a pig. Maybe that's what it is. Or maybe he's not gonna eat the pig because. Considering how the, the lack of consideration 
or the lack of regard the owner has for him, he might try to eat one of them pigs, and, and the owner might kill him over that pig. Right. The yeah. owner might kill him for eating the pig's food. Yeah. Evidently, he yeah. value. Yeah, you know, he yeah. he may value the pigs more than he values this person. Hmm. So for but for whatever reason, he is not going to touch one of these pigs. He's going to covet the pig's food, but he will not right. even th- eat the pig's food. We don't know if it's out of morality or fear. Yeah. So what well, exactly? Uh, we we don't know what the deal is, but for, he's not gonna he's not gonna touch his food. So, um, and here now he comes to his senses. He said, "How many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food?" And here I is dying of hunger. I'm so hungry. I'll get up, go to my father, and say to my father, "I have sinned against heaven and in your sight." Get that speech prepared, right? We gonna clean. Yeah. You know how it is. We gonna clean ourselves up before we go to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't do it. You'll just you'll just make yourself dirty. Don't don't try it. All right. Let's see. I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired hands. So he got up and went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, hey, Pops, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his slaves, quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. And bring out, let me see, and put it on him, put a ring on his finger. I reckon this is the signet ring. He's giving, he's giving his son authority, right? You got, you got the family authority. This is my, you got, you get the signet ring, baby. Hey, you make decisions in my name. So, let's see. His father saw him, er, 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 where we at? And sandals on his feet. He didn't even have any shoes. He pawned off his shoes or something like that. (laughs) They took him to the pawn shop. What can I get for these shoes? Right? What can I get for these shoes? Um, then bring the fatted calf, slaughter it, and let's celebrate with a feast. Because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Come on, man. You know how you know how good it feels when somebody gets it. It's like, yes, you get it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> ah, finally, you get it. Hey. All right. And he began to celebrate. So the older son was in the field. As he came near the house, he heard the music <laughs> and dancing. <laughs> hey. He heard the music and the dancing. So he summoned one of the servants and asked, What's going on, man? And what does this stuff mean? And man, your brother is here, he told him. And your father has slaughtered the fatted cat. Because he has he has them back safe and sound. All right. Then he became angry and didn't want to go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him. But he replied to his father, "Look, I've been slaving for many years for you. <laughs> I've never disobeyed your orders. <laughs> Yet you never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friend." <laughs> How come I don't get a goat? I want a party goat. I want to invite my friends over so we can have a goat party. Party with this goat. It was like a goat pinata or something like that. A party goat. Party goat. All right. Oh, I have another question. Uh. How can he hear people dancing? Well, I guess you know it's a, it's a it's a good question. Maybe it was tap dancing or something like that, like like river dance. Maybe, you know, maybe do the do this. Maybe they're out there stomping the yard, man. Stomping the yard, dude. Like that. It's like, oh man, they got some good stomp going out there. How come I don't get to get out there and stomp with the goat? <laughs> you know, that's a new step, man. It's the goat stomp, dude. You with it? All right. Um, let's see. So I can celebrate with my friends, but. When this son of yours <laughs> he didn't even want to acknowledge him as his wow. brother, he's so disgusted. He didn't even want to acknowledge him as his brother. He's like this son of yours, <laughs> all right? But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your assets with prostitutes, goats, you slaughtered, 
You slaughtered the fatted calf for him. Look at him over there. Eating fatted calf burgers. All right, you slaughtered the fatted calf for him. But son, man, look at here, man. Chill. He said to him, you're always with me. Now notice that the, the uh, it's like all of a sudden over a goat, the son who has had everything, now all of a sudden sees himself as a slave. I'm going to seize a slave now because his brother gets a party with a goat. Right. So it's like, now we take these things for granted, y'all. Yeah. The father has had to remind him, dude, you had a gracious life. I've, I've, you, you, you have pretty much everything. And, this is, and when people try to say that God is this mean, judgmental God, they forget that God gave us grace up front. Yes. We're the ones who squandered. We're the ones who wasted it. It's like we forget what we have. Man, we, so some, we some forgetful people who take things for granted. Yep. Are we not? Yeah, yeah we yeah. are. Every one of us are guilty of it, man. I ain't trying to judge. It's just we, that's what we are. You know, yeah. but we go to the Lord to, to fix that thing about us. Mm. You know? Marine Medicine says he was trying to earn his inheritance. That is a gift. He doesn't really love his father or who his father is. He only cared about what he felt he could earn from his father. Mm. Good. Mm. Now, which wow. one is he, is he talking about? The the uh, he's got to be talking about the older brother. Yeah. Because the younger brother, that's yeah. the conclusion that he came to. Also, he came back thinking that he could earn his father's grace. Right. The son did too. He came yeah. back with a speech prepared. You know, uh, I want to earn it. Which is, I mean, it's that's good. That's good. But you know, the thing is, that's just not how it works. Do that anyway. You know, it's like, yeah, you want you want to have the servant heart. You know, but if you're thinking that, hey, you're overlooking that maybe, but maybe he remembered. It's like, dang, my, my, because he remembered about his slaves. It's like, dang, the slaves had it good. Yeah. And you can only come to that conclusion if you realize that your father is very gracious. Ooh, right. Right? Because right. the slaves, they didn't get that stuff. They didn't just have it. You know, it didn't come from nowhere. It came from somebody. Somebody who gave them the, 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 the resources to, to have more than enough. Well, that came from, from, from Pops, right? Yeah. So... Even the, the younger son was thinking that, you know, he could, you know, uh, exercise merit on this. And his father just had to put the brakes on him. You know, say, yeah, yeah, save your speech. Save your speech. You know, I'm, I'm just glad that you get it now. Yeah. Now we got, now I got something we can work with. Exactly. Okay? Don't feel like, it's like, look, do, you know, keep, get your head right. Have that servant spirit. But I need you to realize who you're the son of. You're the son of a very gracious man. Yes. You know? Now his his other son, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I got that too. It's like uh, his son is probably thinking that you know I've I've earned all this, but at the same time it could be a thing of he may have felt rejected because maybe all this time he may have felt it's like man I've been showing you love, you know I've been working for you I do what you tell me you know not just because um, of what I think I can get out of it but because you're my dad you know and you demonstrated that you are a dad. Who is worthy of, you know, respect and, and honor and, and love. And I've given you those things. And now it turns out that, you know, the other, my brother, who's a full-on knucklehead, goes and does what he does. And he comes at and you go through a party. Maybe his son just felt rejected. Not so much cheated, but rejected, you know, or, or felt uh, um, neglected or something like that. That, his, that maybe his love that he's been putting in wasn't enough. It's like, because you never threw a party for me. Was my love not enough for you? The, 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 the reciprocity that I tried to give you, was yeah. it not enough? But it, it could be both. Maybe he just did want, you know, to, to earn, you know, money so he can get his inheritance and, and get out too. You know, yeah. it, 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 both, I think both are valid ways to look at it. Um, Marine to medicine, yeah, he said, if he loved his dad for who his dad was, mm. he would also have been happy that his brother had returned. Excellent point. And happy that his dad is happy. Right, right. And which what which um which brings me to this thought, thank you. Um he says, but we had to celebrate and rejoice because his brother, this brother of yours, this brother of yours, he corrects him. Because he comes to him and he says, the son of yours. Right? Oh. He says, that son of yours, and his father ties it up and says, No, the brother of yours. I didn't even notice that. Wow. Okay, he says, This is your brother. And you want to know. And the thing is, you should rejoice. And the reason why I'm showing your brother so much love right now is because he's grown up, he's woken up, and now he's more like you. Yeah. You, who used to get out there and work. You, who used to be obedient. Now you're coming and you're challenging me because I'm rewarding 
your brother for being like you. Wow. So, I mean, we can, we can, it's like the things that we lose perspective. And what we're talking about is, is we're, we're, we lose perspective of this grace. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I'm really, really trying to draw out of here is we lose, because the older brother is like, he forgot how gracious his father is, how gracious he's been to him. And because his father has shown grace, I guess maybe this unmitigated or this, or this disproportionate grace that's in his eyes, that's not justified. It's like, dude, you're overlooking that your dad is a really gracious dude. Yeah. You know, and that's what we, that's what, you know, the thing about God, don't forget that God is a really gracious dude. And we can, we lose sight of that a lot. You know, we want to blame, you know, as I said, in, in one of the, one of the lines in uh, my story, you know, the flood, uh, uh, the flood chronicles, you know, we're slow to thank God when things go right and quick to blame him when things go wrong. Yeah. If we, if we, if oh. we believe in him at all. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, you know, that's an illus you know, that's <laughs> one of the, nature. yeah, it's in our nature. That's an illustration to put out there. And yes, excellent contribution. And, and, and uh, by the way, uh, Matt, uh, while you're here, uh, Matt um, was asking me about uh, uh, Calvinism, and, and Matt himself is becoming quite the expert in it. Ooh. And, uh, you know, if people have questions about uh, Calvinism, uh, you know, Matt Rivera would be uh, uh, great to, you know, fellowship with, you know, email him and stuff like that and, you know, get uh, uh, get some information about uh, Calvinism. Um, you know, with Calvinism, it's uh, – let me see if I got some of the questions that uh, – you know, that Matt, you know, was dialoguing with me about, you know, presenting some questions to me. Let me see if I can find yeah. it real quick. <laughs> the operative word being real All quick. Right. And weren't we talking about being organized just a minute ago? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so you're really good at that. Um, hopefully I can find it, uh, see what some of the stuff that we were talking about. I'd really be interested in hearing Calvinism is one of those things that when I was a newer Christian, mm -hmm. I was introduced to Calvinism and it kind of scared me a little bit. It did scare me. Mm. <laughs> Let's see. Like, if, I, if I'm not chosen, I can't go to heaven? Okay. Now, here's here's some issues that I have about that. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use the force and God being the force, of course, because I can't find my notes. Because I'm not a very organized dude. I'm working on... <laughs> Right. Hey, um, okay. This thing about being chosen, all right, is going off. Uh, you know, the thing is, you once again, you got to square that by scripture. Don't make the mistake of isolating scripture and letting that be your that that everything that you understand the Bible is framed up in this one scripture. You have to square it by everything else. Okay, you let the Bible square itself. It it the example that you can look at. In terms of this um, thing about being chosen, how what's a what's a good way to know that you're chosen? A good way to know that you're chosen if you choose God. That's that's one. That's a good indicator. Now, if we look at the if, if if we go by their model that only these chosen people can be the elect of God, well, then none of us would make it. It would only be the Jews. The Jews are God's chosen people. But it looks like somewhere along the line, God made an exception. So now we also get to inherit the kingdom along with the Jews who choose God. Because you're going to have, because if, if the Jews, if the Jews themselves are God's chosen people, how can they be unchosen? And when I say unchosen, I'm not talking about the Jewish people as a whole. I'm talking about Jews who say that, you know what? No, Jesus is not my Messiah. If they're the chosen people, like just absolutely chosen, then they have no choice. But they do get to make a choice and say that, you know what, Jesus is not my Messiah. I do not accept him. Now, there's you got them as the chosen people, and then you got your Gentiles. Not all Gentiles are going to choose God. Now, this also has to square up with whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whosoever. So, that's also that the, those who God chooses are, are the ones who choose him. So I, when looking at, you know, the, this Calvinist, you know, model about who can be who's going to be chosen, who, who's going to inherit the kingdom, that they're predestined. It's like, no, no. If we went by that, if we if we took a strict adherence to that frame, ignoring everything else, then why would we even bother? We would say, well, Jews are the God's chosen people. None of us get to, we, we don't get to uh, 
inherit the kingdom. But you have to look at the, the whole scope of it. Because despite you, it's almost like you got to uh, you got to tell God, you know what? No, God, we want you. We understand what you're saying about chosen. But you know what? No, no, we want you. This is we set substantiated in the woman who came to Jesus saying, you know what? Jesus, uh, you know, my, my daughter, I need her help. I need you to help her and stuff like that. They just paraphrase it really quick. And Jesus says, hey, this bread is for the children. It's not right to give the bread to the children. And give, it's not right. I mean, it's not right to give the bread to the dogs when it's meant for the children. That was unacceptable to her. Jesus flat out says that, no, this is for a chosen group of people, a chosen group. That was unacceptable to her. And she says, I will take the crumbs off the table. I'll take the crumbs. And Jesus says, okay, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. No, you, we can talk. We can talk now. Okay, so this idea that's saying that there are people who are predestined for this and only they can inherit it and nobody else can because it's all about who God chose, you got to look at the full scripture. You got. It's like you can actually take it to God and say, you know what, God, I know this wasn't meant for me, but you know what? I want you. I want you. I want you yeah. and God be like, we can talk. So, you know, that's my, my take on it. Like I said, if you want to have a more in-depth discussion, you know, you can take it, you know, with Matt because Matt's done a lot of research on this and uh, he's got some good edification uh, for y'all if you want to explore it. So, um, yeah, I was going to read what Matt said and scroll up to continue this. He said, um, they reject it. World is turned into the elect. We mm. have been elect as a church, not as individuals. Mm. Yeah. Now the thing that this this the elected <clears throat> the elected are uh, the elected are the ones who select God. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? This it's it's yeah. really a rep reciprocity here. I know it's yeah. like that someone has want to stick to this predestined model. Yeah. It's like God has already chosen whom He's going to choose. It's like in the, well, I mean, in the grand scheme of it, yeah, God knows how the whole thing is going to play out. He knows who's going to who's going to come to him and who's not. But we still have a choice in the matter. Yeah. There's a choice to it. So um, this this notion that it's like and it's already demonstrated with the Jews. The Jews were the chosen. They, well, they're still the chosen people. Yeah. They're still the chosen people. But even Jews as chosen people can choose not to be. <laughs> God's not going to make them come into heaven. If they decide that, no, Jesus is not my Messiah, they don't, they don't have to accept that. Yeah. So do you know what I'm saying? You see what the problem with predestined is? Like if you're predestined to do this, if you're chosen, then that means that you don't have a choice. You have to accept it. Well, that, that goes against the free will concept. See, you know, that, that doesn't work. Yeah. God, it, it's, it's like, come on now. Freaking Jacob. Look at Jacob. I'm not letting you go. Until you bless me. Right. You can struggle with God and say, God, I know that this, maybe this you know, was a mess, but you can, I'm not letting yeah. you go until you keep me with you. Yeah. I am not letting you go. Wow. So even those, even us, us Gentiles, we're not chosen. We're not the chosen people. Yeah. But we are when we choose him. Amen. Okay. So in the, myself. that's right. God, whosoever. Whosoever, yeah. God calls us all. If you, if you're, if you're a, a, a sentient being, if you're a person who who can who uh, can grasp any sort of concept of right and wrong, you're you have the potential to make this choice. Yes. So once and once you do, and God sees you making that choice to choose Him, you become the elect. Amen. Hmm? That's awesome. Hmm. Awesome, honey. <laughs> All right. Anybody, anybody else want to contribute to the party you know, here? That made me think about. Um, we have a mutual friend. This is uh, Matt. We have a mutual friend, and she's a Calvinist. Mm -hmm. And she had told Zoe that she doesn't have to um, go tell people about the gospel. That part of their belief is they don't have to tell people about the gospel because. Everyone's already been elected. Like, not everyone in the world, but 
the people who are going to be elected have been elected, so they do not need to go and tell like Jesus instructed us to. So. I was going to say that flies in the face of the Great Commission. Yeah. If we're told to get out there and preach the gospel, and, and Jesus was so serious about this, like, I want you to preach the gospel. Not just me, I want you to preach to your cat, to your dog, to your <laughs> goldfish. To I want you to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want you to get out there and I want you to minister to everything. <laughs> Hey, now that doesn't mean that you know you you sit down with your cat and dog, you know, and, and you and you read to them. I mean, it's, it's good fun fun to do. I mean, your cat might just sit there and purr and stuff like that and lick itself. I don't know, <laughs> but basically, you you do it in action. You, of course, you be kind to your animals. You demonstrate in the kindness to your animals. Uh, you know, in that sort of ministry, you know, it's not you know necessarily like talking to them and you know or, or whatnot. You know, so you don't want to get that you know crazy. That's like stepping into Peterville. Um, but. Yes, in that sense, God is very serious about getting out there and spreading the gospel. The idea that we're supposed to keep it to ourselves because people have already been chosen, that, that, no, that, that doesn't work. Yeah. He said, um, M to M, <laughs> Matt said, um, if Calvinism is true, Christ's atonement saves no one. It mm -hmm. was God's degree from eternity that saved them. And, you, and that's good, and, and that's that's getting down to the bottom line right there, bro. You yeah. know, uh, that's 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 it. You know, once again, we get into this uh, this meritocracy model that assumes that, um, you know, well, it's it's not it's 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 not even that. No, let me let me let me let me walk that back. It's not even a meritocracy. You know, because you we've it's, it's and it's it's not a merit on the part of man. It's not even a merit on the part of Jesus. You mean just okay? It's just predestined that okay these people are going to be cho chosen that that means that jesus whatever he did on the cross was worthless and I, I imagine that's what you're already saying it would mean that jesus didn't even have to go to the cross in the first place yeah so it, it um this model that you know well god's already chosen who he's going to chose i mean choose it doesn't add up it, it doesn't work 